devised in utter secrecy as early as 1934. The German engineers disguised their Nebelwerfer multiple rocket launcher as a smoke projector. League of Nations intelligence believed Germany was producing a defensive smoke weapon, when in fact, they were making a powerful rocket launcher that would terrorize the Allied forces in World War II. Then, as the distressful weapon reached the Eastern Front, France, and Northern Africa battlefields, it was the world's most advanced rocket launching system. In February of 1943, the Green American troops did everything in their power to hold back the battle-hardened forces of Field Marshal Erben Rommel when they first clashed against the mighty Wehrmacht during the Battle of Kasserine Pass. However, their efforts would prove futile as the Germans unleashed a battalion of naval Werfer rocket launchers upon the unexpecting Allies. The disturbing wailing produced by the rockets, as well as the fiery spectacle that lit the night, sent the Americans into a panic, and the weapon became as feared as the enemy itself. Chemical Warfare during the last years of the 1930s, as a new global conflict loomed ever closer, the world superpowers were preparing for chemical war. After all, such weapons had been a critical component of the World War I experience, and they had to be ready to respond if the enemy unleashed them. With that philosophy in mind, Germany began the development of a groundbreaking mobile multiple rocket launcher. The weapon was designed to be highly versatile and able to launch smoke bombs, incendiaries, explosives, and chemical weapons. If the incoming war devolved into a chemical conflict, Germany would be ready to use mobile rocket launchers to rain chlorine, phosgene, and mustard gas over its enemies. What's more, the weapon could be used to unleash the newly discovered Tabu nerve agent upon the Allied forces. The rocket launcher system was highly versatile and extremely advanced for its time, and no matter what kind of events World War II would bring, the new German rocket launcher would be a formidable asset for the Wehrmacht. A deceptive weapon. The Nebelwerfer, which translates to smoke projector or smoke mortar, was designed as a state-of-the-art rocket launcher. However, its name was chosen to deceive the League of Nations, which was closely monitoring Germany's military manufacturing to prevent it from breaching the limitations issued by the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. Nazi Germany kept the project's true nature a top secret while showcasing the harmless production of a smoke mortar meant to deploy defensive smoke screens in case of an attack. In reality, the Nebelwerfer was a concept design that produced nine different individual rocket launching models. Its inception occurred in 1934, as Hitler desperately struggled to circumvent the Treaty of Versailles and arm his men without alarming the League of Nations. The design consisted of a five-barreled or six-barreled multiple rocket launcher mounted on the towed carriage salvaged from a 3.7cm PAK-36 anti-tank gun and a swiveling stabilizing jack was added to the front of the cart to stabilize the launcher when firing. The contraption was able to fire all of its missiles in little more than a minute, making it a destructive asset for the German forces. Still, it was anything but a defensive weapon. The Nebelwerfer The Nebelwerfer would be one of the first rocket launcher systems used during World War II, along with the infamous Soviet BM-13 Katyusha, and although it did not deliver the spectacle that that weapon did, the Nebelwerfer is widely considered a more advanced rocket launcher due to its remote electrical firing mechanism, spin-stabilized projectiles, and ammunition versatility. The rocket nozzle array included 22 orifices, uniformly spaced around the rim of the nozzle, and they set an angle of 16 degrees from the shaft to give the projectile a clockwise rotation. As it was fired, the propelled rockets expelled a powerful burst that kicked up a substantial amount of dust and debris. Thus, the operators had to seek shelter before activating the Nebelwerfer. It was because of that mechanism that the rockets were remotely fired, which allowed the crew to seek shelter, but also avoid swift retaliation fire from the enemy. In addition, the projectile was fired automatically, one at a time, and in a timed pattern. As such, the system could not fire a single missile without launching the rest. Moreover, the rockets could be configured with either impact or delay fuses, depending on the mission parameters, and liner rails could be mounted on the system to allow it to use 15cm Wurfgranat 41 rockets for smoke and poison gas projectiles. 
The German engineers designed the spin-stabilized rocket with the engine toward the front, thus placing the warhead farther above ground to optimize the blast effect. Finally, the rocket launchers were organized into batteries of six launchers and one anti-tank gun with three batteries per battalion. These battalions were concentrated in independent Werfer regiments and brigades. Still, they could be assigned to a specific division for a particular operation, but most of the time, the Werfer regiments had their own objectives and command chains. A broad assortment. During the fall of France in 1940, the German army received its first 15-centimeter naval Werfer units, capable of delivering all three payload types, but primarily used to fire high-explosive rounds. The rocket launchers were used to a limited degree during the last weeks of the conquest. Their incendiary payload was often used during the naval Werfer's initial deployment, as they delivered a swift and broad fire blaze that could devastate entire towns and urban areas. By 1941, as Germany prepared for the invasion of the Soviet Union, the first 28 32cm Naval Werfer 41 rockets were delivered to the Eastern Front in both 280mm high explosive and 320mm incendiary versions. The new rockets were not limited to the 5 to 6 cylinder circular configuration, as the 28 32cm Naval Werfer 41 rockets could be arranged in two racks of three missiles each. In addition, the rack's frames were made of wood, which would later be switched to metal tubes. These racks could be mounted on a towed carriage, like in previous versions. However, they could also be fitted atop armored half-tracks or single tubes mounted beneath the wings of Luftwaffe warplanes to use against American bomber formations. The first iteration of the Nebelwerfer would be the 30cm Nebelwerfer 42. This version saw action in the final stages of the war, and it featured more than twice the range of the 28-32cm models. Each iteration of the weapon had some specific design elements in common. They were all remotely fired and used the same finless spin-stabilized rockets that could carry explosives, incendiary oil, or poison gas. Plus, the systems could launch all their projectiles within 90 seconds, with reload speeds of up to 5 minutes. Battle Tested The Nebelwerfer was widely used in its different variations by the German armed forces on every front except Norway and the Balkans. The rocket launchers were often valued for being substantially cheaper than artillery units, while also delivering severe psychological damage to enemy units. Being one of the very first rocket launching systems in the war, most troops were not used to the overwhelming sound and the shocking light show they produced. This often led to enemy troops panicking at the sight of Nebelwerfer fire. In reality, Nebelwerfer rockets were less lethal than artillery shells, as they exploded on impact and were unable to penetrate any defenses. Thus, even troops behind light cover were usually safe from the weapon's effects. Nevertheless, the German weapon would have shocking results during the first Allied encounters with the Nebelwerfer. Striking Fear Operation Torch was the first major Western mission carried out by American troops after joining the war. In it, US and British forces were tasked with capturing French North Africa to regain control of the Mediterranean Sea. Facing mostly depleted French Vichy forces, the Allied troops quickly took control of Morocco and Algeria, while the German forces, led by Erwin Rommel, were busy fighting against the British troops in Libya and Egypt. The situation grew even more frightening when a furious Hitler reinforced Rommel, and the battle-hardened general rushed to Tunisia to clash against the green American troops. The Americans and the Germans then battled each other for the first time in the war near the border of Algeria and Tunisia, in a place known as Kasserine Pass. The US troops outnumbered the Germans, but Rommel had experience on his side. The Desert Fox was known for employing psychological warfare tactics to demoralize his opponents, and after the entrenched US troops repelled his first attack, Rommel unleashed a massive artillery barrage, carefully bolstered by a naval Werfer regiment. The night sky was suddenly lit on fire, as the rocket launchers delivered hundreds of projectiles into the Allied positions, while producing their characteristically ominous sound. The nightmarish scene led many American soldiers to abandon their posts, and when the German tanks charged their position and aimed at the barrage, the American defenses fled the battle. Widespread Use For the remainder of the war, the Nebelwerfer would be effectively used to destroy Allied troops 
but also instill terror amid their ranks. After the landing at Normandy, naval Werfer batteries saw frequent use while defending France and Germany. Still, the Allied forces soon grew familiar with the weapon system, dubbing it the Screaming Mimi. After witnessing the effective use of multiple rocket launchers, the US military also developed its own systems by mounting a rack of 60 4.5-inch rockets on top of M4 Sherman tanks. The system would be known as the T-34 Calliope, and it would continue to be used until the end of the war. Then, as the Allied effort gained steam, the naval Werfer's use would be limited to defensive operations. Still, they were used in some offensive missions as well. In 1942, when the Soviets attempted to recapture the Crimean Peninsula during the Battle of the Kerch Peninsula, the Wehrmacht used a regiment of Nebelwerfer rocket launchers in an overwhelming counterattack that obliterated the second defensive line of the Soviet 44th Army. The rocket launchers delivered an overwhelming defeat to the Soviet landing efforts, after which the Germans remained in control of Crimea. The rocket launchers would also be used for defense purposes during the Battle of Cannes, responding to Operation Cobra and several encounters following the landings in Normandy. As a cheap and effective indirect fire system, the Nebelwerfer became ubiquitous as Germany struggled to fight the Allied invasion. The Nebelwerfer multiple rocket launchers accompanied the German troops till the last days of the war, but despite their effectiveness and technological advancement, they would not make a difference in the outcome of the global conflict. Backtracking Despite the countless horrors of World War II, all the nations involved ultimately abstained from using chemical weapons for combat, which was the initial purpose of the Nebelwerfer multiple rocket launcher. But even Germany refrained from using its vast deposits of chemicals, opting instead for conventional warfare methods. There's no clear explanation behind Germany's reasoning for not using such agents. Some historians argue that Germany's chemical program lacked behind other nations, and Hitler knew it. In contrast, others attribute this reluctance to Hitler's own experience in World War I. The Führer had suffered the devastating effects of chemical weapons during his time as a German dispatch runner in France. It is said that the dreadful experience might have led to his hesitancy to use chemical weapons and risk the enemy using them on his own countrymen. Whatever the reason, no Western nation during World War II ever crossed the chemical warfare line, and many powerful technologies like the Nebelwerfer were limited to function as conventional weapons abandoning their darker initial purpose. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this story, don't hesitate to click on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history and military content. And click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. We publish new videos regularly, so stay tuned.